In this video, we'll be considering several forms of the beta distribution. Let's begin with the standard beta distribution. The distribution in its standard form ranges from 0 to 1. Part of its value is that it can take a wide range of shapes. This is a shape shifter distribution. For example, if I changed alpha 1 here, that symmetrical hump becomes a triangle. If I change alpha 2, the triangle becomes a uniform distribution. If I add a zero here, you see something that looks exponential. If I add a zero here, you see something that begins to look normal. So the beta distribution is very handy for modeling expert opinion. This can capture an expert's opinion on a wide variety of, of uh, uncertain variables. Let's take a look now at the beta general, because the beta distribution is confined to the interval 0 and 1. It would be very handy to have a shape shifter that could span other values. And that's just what the beta general is. Here you see that familiar symmetrical hump, and I have uh, a 2, just as we did before, change it to a 1, and we get a triangular distribution but look at the horizontal axis. We are now spanning the area that is 0 to 40. And so the minimum and the maximum enable you to shift the beta distribution along the number line to any bounded range that you have. So it's important to note that the beta distribution is indeed bounded on the right and the left. If we consider the beta, beta general alternative this you're not likely to use too much, uh, it, certainly in the early going. It's a beta distribution, but it is defined by percentile values. So that if you have some data, you could use such a distribution here. The beta subjective is another that is not likely to going to be first on your list. It enables you to describe a beta distribution with a minimum a maximum and a most likely value. But if you happen to have some data, it enables you to use the mean as the fourth parameter for defining this distribution. The beta is a useful distribution. You can rescale it and shift it to create distributions with a wide range of shapes and over any finite range. So it's very useful in modeling expert opinion. In fact, I'm going to go back to the beta general here. Now let's imagine that we are dealing with a quantity where we have very little data, but I know this quantity is somewhere between 10 and 40. The example that comes to mind for me was some years ago working on a risk assessment where we were trying to estimate the amount of a product that disappeared from the docks, either unaccounted for, stolen, lost, damaged. And so imagine that's what we're dealing with here, where we have a minimum. We know at least 10% of the product will be unaccounted for. It could be as much as 40%. And if that's all we know, then we can begin to use our expert's opinion and play with these alpha 1, alpha 2 parameters until we get the kind of shape that we want. How does this variable span the range from 10 to 40? Are values close to 40 much more likely? If so, then we would be increasing the alpha 1 parameter. That shifts the distribution in one direction. On the other hand, if we thought it was more likely that losses were closer to 10, we might go the other way. And varying that parameter, you can get a, a rather dynamic view of how the distribution changes. Although that's probably not going to show up well on your, on your video. So this beta general becomes a very useful distribution for experts who are working with some notions of how 
uh, a variable behaves but without data. Keep it in mind, it's a very valuable shape-shifting distribution.